Today I want to show you an easy way to keep your project's dependencies up to date. And that is by using the DependentBot service that is built into GitHub. So uh, I've got one of my side projects right here called Fitness Challenge. It's in GitHub. And I have no DependentBot uh, running. And a lot of my dependencies here in my package JSON are out of date. They're, they're old. And so the way I can start using DependentBot is to come right up here to Insights click dependency graph, and then click depend a bot. And this is where we can configure it. Now you might see a screen that looks like this that says enable depend a bot. And once you click that, you'll then see what I see right here. And it says depend a bot version updates aren't configured yet. Dependent bot creates pull requests to keep your dependencies up to date. So let's go ahead and click this green create config file. And what this is gonna do is go ahead and add a new file to our project, you can see right here in the .github folder called dependabot.yaml. And uh, this is how we configure dependabot. Now, it starts off with the version of dependabot and then three required keys that we need in order for this to start running. And you'll see right here, we have a link to all of the configuration options. But for this case, uh, the first one is package ecosystem. This fitness challenge app of mine is a next app. So it uses node and NPM. So we just need to put NPM right here. The directory is where the package manifest is. And again, in this case, uh, if I just look at the root here of my project, we'll see my package JSON manifest file is right in the root. So slash is gonna work just fine for us. And then I'll go ahead and leave this as the default. This means every week, Dependabot will check our manifest and open up PRs with new uh, updates if any of our dependencies have changed. So then I can scroll down here and I can go ahead and commit this directly to main or create a new branch. I'll go ahead and commit it directly to main, click commit new file. And now we'll see uh, this commit has been added to the main uh, branch of my GitHub repo. So now uh, if I click on the status indicator, we'll see there is a new line for dependabot check. And this thing is gonna make sure that our YAML changes are good. It's gonna validate that configuration. And uh, once that configuration is valid, dependabot's basically gonna go off and start working. Now, as soon as you change dependabot.yaml, you know, if we were to change the schedule from weekly to daily or anything like that, it would kick off uh, a new job and it would immediately check your package. So uh, pretty soon here, if I click around and see, we'll already see uh, that the job was kicked off and we're gonna start seeing PRs with updates to our dependencies. So this is pretty cool. I already have a PR that tells me prettier's uh, out of date. This is the kind of thing that, you know, it's easy for this to just slide for a long time, but here I'm gonna get a really simple PR and you can see I have another part of my GitHub workflow, which is gonna run my Cypress test for this action. And once this goes green, I can just come back here and merge that in. If I refresh, we'll see uh, there's a lot more dependencies that are out of date. And uh, this is why, you know, Dependabot usually by default will batch these up one time at a week because you don't want to kind of be overwhelmed with these. But I wanted to show that to you uh, real quick first, just so you knew how easy it is to configure. You know, I used to use Dependabot when it first came out and it wasn't part of GitHub. And so there was a lot more process involved in getting it set up. If I had known it was this easy, I would have done it from the beginning on all my side projects. And uh, second and more importantly, I just want to talk really quickly about keeping your dependencies up to date. Uh, I used to work in open source a lot and when you are maintaining a library that's used by others, it's really important for you to keep uh, your library's dependencies up to date because of all sorts of reasons, security, uh, fixes that come in. Uh, you don't know what versions of you know, React or Vue or Svelte that the people who are using your library are using. So you need to stay on top of that so that your tool works with all the other tools in the ecosystem out there. But uh, for your application, uh, some folks, take different positions on how often they update their dependencies. And um, in my experience, uh, once I had taken the lessons I had learned from maintaining open source packages and brought it into the apps I worked on with other people at my company or on the side, uh, the benefits were huge. So over the weekend, I wanted to work on this app. I wanted to add a feature. And uh, the, the feature I wanted to build relied on a new 
uh, version of a dependency I use. Well, I couldn't just update that dependency uh, without updating other dependencies like the version of React because, you know, for instance, in this case, React had gone from 17 to 18. I was actually on some beta version of React 18. And so uh, very quickly you can see when you leave the dependencies outdated for a long period of time, sometimes you, you get in these situations where you just have this web of interconnected updates that you need to do. And so I ended up spending my entire Sunday just getting everything up to date so that next time I could just come in and work on the app. So, you know, needless to say, if you're working on, on an app with a lot of people, you want anyone to be able to come into that app and just work on something and be able to rely on the fact that they are using a very recent version of a package or if they need to update to like a, a, a release that has just come out, they would be able to do so. And pushing off updates for months and months or even a year at a time, uh, so much in the ecosystem has changed that using something like Dependabot to do it over time is a way to amortize the cost of updating your dependencies in your app. It's almost like paying your mortgage payment every month. If you just do it as you go, it's not that bad and you never hit the situation where you know all of a sudden you have to come up with $200,000 uh, in your bank account. It's the same situation here. Most of the time, dependencies that update uh, are minor or patch versions and they're gonna work just fine in your app. Every once in a while, you're gonna have something that's a breaking change that is relevant to your code and you just address it when you see it and then you keep going. And again, that's a way to amortize that cost so that dependency upgrades never really interfere with the feature work that you wanna be spending your time doing. Now, another point I wanna make here is about testing. Now, if you look at this screen here and we refresh, we'll see it looks like all of these uh, these four PRs right here that are upgrading SWR and Prettier and uh, Tailwind Forms and DataFNs are all green. So the check is green, which means uh, we were able to deploy and build. And if we click show all checks, we'll also see that we have a Cypress um, action as part of our GitHub workflow that has passed. That means we have tests that have run and have passed. So testing is an important part of this. And actually, once you kind of set Dependabot up and get used to doing this bit by bit and have the satisfaction of coming into an app that's always up to date, it's it's really uh, a nice feeling and it feels good. It's just one, it's all the, those frictions removed so you can just get right to coding. You start to kind of get addicted to this and you want to be able to merge these PRs even faster. You want to basically just be able to see them see that the check is green and then merge them and be confident that your app is still going to work with a new version of the dependency. You know, dependencies update minor and patch versions. They could still break your app unintentionally, right? There could be a bug in one of those updates. So uh, this whole workflow and in involving dependency updates on a regular basis actually nudges you. I find that it nudges you to have better test coverage, which I think is a good thing. And uh, in some of the apps I've worked on, we've had uh, such good uh, test coverage that you can actually enable Dependabot to automatically merge minor and patch versions of updates as soon as your build and all of your workflow checks finish. That's an even cooler feeling. You have a production app that people are subscribed to, they're paying you money for, and you look in your Slack you know, notifications channel and you see that there's been new versions of your app deployed by Dependabot, someone not even on your team, and the app is still working all your checks are good, people are still using it. And that, again, is an awesome feeling to be in, just like being able to deploy on a Friday night and leave the computer for the weekend and being confident that your app works is an awesome feeling. So um, that's kind of another aspect of this that I think is you know, a, a good thing. A lot of people feel like they don't really get a lot of value from tests sometimes, and it's almost like an eat your greens thing that they're being told to do. Well, if you start having these PRs and you want to get them merged easily and quickly, again, to keep your app in a very pleasant spot to work on, having good test coverage that lets you auto merge these uh, is a huge win. Now, just to wrap up, I will say that, of course, there, there is a cost to this, right? These are kind of new PRs that, you ha that, that require your attention. And adding a test suite that is uh, robust enough so that you can actually auto merge them um, is, is also a cost. There's also a cost to that, especially if you're working on an app that has like no tests. Sometimes getting testing set up itself is, is a big project. Um, and there are times where it's not worth it. The cost is not worth it. Just like there's times where writing a robust test suite is not worth it necessarily for an app. 
I used to work for a conference company and uh, when we were at the conference site, you know, for a week at a time, a couple of times a year, there would be all these requests for these kind of one-off apps, special purpose apps that would literally be used for that conference in that venue that year and then basically be thrown out forever, right? There were also apps that got used again and again, but there were apps that were thrown out. And when you're kind of just working really quickly in that sort of environment and you need to deploy that app, uh, you're not going to stop and write tests for that because you're making something that's going to be used in two hours. Like literally that's happened to me before. And so in the same uh, in the same thinking there, if we had put that app that we built in two hours and was used, we're not going to enable Dependabot on it right away. And so there are a class of, of, of apps that writing tests for and adding Dependabot for are uh, is not appropriate. But I will challenge you that probably a lot more apps than you think would benefit from Dependabot and would benefit from tests. Even apps that you don't intend to change. There's, there's apps that you work on and you're going to deploy and host them forever. And you want them to be online. Like maybe they're just a reference site or an article or a blog post or something like that. And you're never going to change it. But you are going to host and serve that forever, right? And uh, you're probably serving that on some platform. Something like a, a, a Vercel or a Heroku. And uh, these platforms change as well. And uh, sometimes these platforms will actually end of life uh, the stacks that they used to support. And you might there might come a time where you have to update the stack that you have deployed your site to, and that might require dependency updates. So then again, you're going to find yourself in a spot where uh, you have 20 dependency updates to do, and all of those interconnected dependencies are going to make it very, very hard. And so even for sites that you don't intend to change a lot, I still think it can definitely be worth it that's why we have the interval uh, option on Dependabot. You can check it you know, every three months, every six months, and just make sure you don't have a bunch of major upgrades that's gonna take you a lot of time when you need to be able to make a change quickly. But you know, for my demo apps that I do on my weekly YouTube videos that are just kind of one-offs, I'm not gonna enable Dependabot and get a bunch of emails for you know minor version, patch version upgrades for Framer Motion on the last you know 10 videos that I made. So you definitely want to uh, you know use it when it's appropriate. But for most of the sites that I work on, the side projects that I use my friends that I work on, even if I work on them every three or six months and uh, projects I work on with, with other people or apps that you work on with your company, uh, you owe it to yourself to give Dependabot a shot.